Well, good morning and welcome. It's good to see all of you here today at St. John. I just wanted to tell you to look into the bulletin. There's a few announcements there. And also to remind you that the Nulu Fest is scheduled for the 28th. And for the 14th, Nulu is hosting its well-known street festival, celebrating the continued growth and revitalization of Louisville's East Market District. Come enjoy live music, regional micro-brewed beers, and numerous food and retail booths by local vendors. There will be activities for all ages. The event is free, family-friendly, and open to the public. So please put that on your calendars. My friends will begin service shortly. Again, it's good to see you. Remember, no matter who you are or where you are on your journey, you are welcome here. in beautiful boulevards to walk. Our God invites us to walk the road of service and sacrifice. Our society suggests we put down our roots in the shallow soil of pleasure and greed. Our God seeks to plant us on the banks of hope, watered by the rivers of joy and grace. Our culture promotes achievement, success, climbing to the top, ringing the bell. Our God tells us if we want to be first, we need to go to the end of the line. Praise be to our God who has and continues to transform our world. Please remain standing if you're able for our gathering song, New Century Hymnal number 498.
God, just as you, you have welcomed parts of us that we have been taught to hide, so you ask us to welcome the people who are hidden away from the world's judgment. Help us to open our eyes, our hearts, and our lives to those who are, are given little or no honor in our communities. Make us a place of refuge for those who are not welcome elsewhere, that we might walk in knowledge and love of you and your people. Amen. sisters and brothers, when we come before God in humility and honesty, God draws near to us with forgiveness and renewed blessing. Thanks be to God. And now we come to the time of the passing of the peace. And I know that in some congregations, people stand away and wave. But this loving congregation is different. It sets an example. Be careful if you're concerned, because I guess things are still brewing around there, and COVID is still alive and well. But please, my sisters and brothers, may the Lord's peace be with you.
stand in body or spirit if you are able for the reading of today's scripture, Psalm 1 and Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on, on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the, the wicked will perish. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand that he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. When they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Well, it's good to be back here again. Someone on the way to the pew said, And who are you? I am Reverend Diane Bago. You can read about me in the bulletin. I'm just a pulpit supply preacher. I was here last Sunday, and I'm here this Sunday and I'm honored to be with all of you. As I said last week, coming here is such a beautiful experience because the sanctuary and the choir, the liturgy, it's just really a beautiful experience. You know, some congregations are a little bit more relaxed, and this congregation, although relaxed, there's such a sense of solemnity and prayer. It's so good to be with you. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts give you glory, honor, and praise. You are our rock, our redeemer, our fortress, and we are ever grateful. Thanks be to God. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you my friends, my sisters and brothers, I have my sermon and things prepared, but I want to call your attention back to Kathy and the words that she read in Psalm 1. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. When Kathy read those words, they just stuck in me and spoke to me. And I think about how here at St. John, you are like trees planted by the streams of water. You yield fruit. Your leaves do not wither. In all the day, you prosper. My friends, some of you here are young. Perhaps you are just getting started with your careers and with family or set, setting into your professional life. That's good. Some of us are older. We've been around a while and we've seen and experienced a few more ups and downs in our life, in our careers, in our families. Perhaps some of you are retired and looking back on the past and the life that you've led and the experiences and the choices. Perhaps some are just in between, 
enjoying the journey, enjoying the moment, and trusting. No matter where you're in life, where you are, this idea of becoming a servant to one another is not always easy to grasp. My friends, think back to your childhood. Did any one of you say to your parents or to your siblings when you were growing up, I think I'm going to grow up and be a servant? I don't think so. Not to say that perhaps you didn't grow up in the church or understand Jesus' message or value what it really meant to be a child of God. But growing up in the world, we often think about making our mark. When we were all children, perhaps we had big dreams of accomplishing so much, doing important work, perhaps raising a family, creating a home, a safe haven. Goals and careers and accomplishments are not bad, but are these things to be gained for ourselves alone or for the betterment of something larger? like our families and our communities in the world. Do I have any parents here or grandparents? Anybody a parent or a grandparent? Could you raise your hand? We got a few hands. I see them. Great. Parents, I think you know something about a life of service, don't you? I mean, I don't know if you saw that in the fine print when you became parents, but in order to be a parent, you have to be a servant. Let's face it. How many times did you have to assist your children with some task or some endeavor? Do you remember? Can you recall those times? I think from everything like tying, tying one's shoelaces to spelling bees and math homework. These are the things that children learn not just at school, but at home with their families. And when we spend time with the children and grandchildren, we're reinforcing these things and helping them to grow. I think many of you made sacrifices to help your family out. Perhaps you spent time with your son in his math problems or your daughter and you helped her to read. Being a parent to some degree means getting comfortable with serving, doesn't it? But how did you serve? Did you keep score? And when your child became an adult, you said, Look what I've done for you? Probably not. Because loving your family with all the mundane chores and lessons of life, that's just part of being family, mother, father. Perhaps you parents and grandparents are in a unique place because you understand what Jesus is getting at here. You want to be first, you must be served. But servitude with a full heart can be the best blessing, can't it? When we come with a full heart to our child, to our family, to the church, to the community, when we come with a full heart, everyone benefits, right? Everyone does. I remember when I was a child and money was tight, my mom bought us a few steaks for the family. We didn't have steak often, but I remember those times. I remember when the steaks came out of the oven, I noticed that mom didn't have one for herself. I kind of wondered what was up. She said, don't worry, I'll just wait till you're finished and I'll eat the leftovers and grab some of that good stuff around the bone. It's funny, back as a child, I thought my mother was strange, the way she liked to chew on the bones. But, you know, I was a kid. Today, I'm quite impressed with my mother. As I grow, I continue to see that she wanted the very best for us, and she would eat too, but after her children ate, and ate well. I am touched by my mother and her sacrifice. She did this from a loving place and with a full heart. Now, on the way to adulthood, we reach for things, don't we? We try to become someone. We reach for things that will help us stand out, Things that will make us, to help us to make our mark in the world. Becoming a CEO, a teacher, an accountant, a chef, a beautiful organist, a talented choir member, and beyond, or a loving mother. These are all very good things, are they not? But if we forget what Jesus is saying here, 
then we may think that our identity in the world is wrapped up in our ego. I once heard a contemporary speaker speak about ego, and he said this, ego is edging God out. Wow. How true. And it doesn't mean we don't have important roles, high levels, but sometimes we forget, don't we? And we all do, we've all done it. We've edged God out in the pursuit of something important. Sometimes in being more about ego than about servitude. And then you and I come to church and hear Mark and Jesus in Mark. You wanna be first? You must be served. So this means, as I can tell, that you and I are Christian agents in the world, and we can recognize what people do and say about themselves and others, and as we watch them, we can see, are they really for us and the world, or are they really all about themselves? And again, I'm mindful that we all switch, and we all have stellar moments and not-so-stellar not moments. But you and I, as agents in the world, as Christian agents, can see by other people's agenda what's really happening. Parker Palmer has been one of my favorites over the years, and I love him. I don't know if any of you have read his work, things like Let Your Life Speak, or To Know As We Are Known, or Healing the Heart of Democracy. Parker Palmer, in his journey, talks about going through a dark night and a deep depression, and in that time, he came a new consciousness, a new awareness. He does a lot of speaking and teaching and work to try to make unity, I would say, to be more a reflection of the kingdom that Jesus emphasized. I love Parker, and I think even as he ages, he continues to try to speak up and speak out for a world that needs to move in the direction of God's kingdom and not away. But we don't have to go to spiritual authors and leaders like Parker. I don't know everything about Mark Cuban, but he's gotten my attention lately. I don't know if you've ever read about him or seen him on some of the shows. I think it's Shock Tanks was in it. Apparently, Mark Cuban, again, I don't know everything about him or his background, but he has said in every business I've sold, I've paid out bonuses to every employee that worked for me for more than a year. 330 employees became millionaires when his auto streaming service was sold. Wow. There's something about Mark that's also got my attention, and it's his deep financial commitment to those who have worked with him. Now, we may all not be able to be with Mark, but I think we would agree that when a company shares its profits with employees, everyone wins and everyone is blessed. The problem is when times are tough and life is difficult, businesses and business leaders get scared and worried and sometimes hold on to the resources as they prepare for the worst. Have you ever heard of Rick Steves? He was a traveler, or is a traveler and a host, and he's got some of the best travel experiences in the world. My friends, Jim and Becky, have traveled with Rick Steves. They said that Rick, during COVID, was especially careful to care for his workers. He lost money to keep afloat. I still remember when Jim, Jim and Becky told us the story about Rick and his commitment to those who served him so faithfully. I thought, what kind of leader takes that kind of sacrifice to help those who are on the fringes that without the paycheck they could go under? Rick's kindness, generosity, and servitude are truly amazing. He stands out as a servant, and yet he's a big business owner with customers from around the world. My friends Beck and 
Jim and Becky perhaps have traveled with them since. Traveled with Rick and his company. They've been to Germany recently and to London. And I hope to travel with him sometime too. There's something about Rick, his dedication to his employees. Who wouldn't want to support an organization like that? My friends, you and I are Christian agents. And no, I won't provide you with a business card as you exit, but you and I are agents in the world. But you and I can tell when people speak and how they live and carry themselves what they truly love and value. You can tell what's essential. My friends, we live in difficult times, and some of our leaders in our community can create violence with one word, one phrase, one image. One word, one phrase, one image, and then the community explore, explodes with rage. One. Others have such a hatred for their neighbor that servitude seems like a foreign concept. My friends, we're being reminded today as we are reminded, I think every Sunday, as we come to the table and recognize who we are, that no matter what we have, what we've gained, no matter how important we are, no matter the title, the salary, the summer homes, the opportunities, the books, the status, the greatest must serve, period. Jesus did. He's the example. He is who we found. He laid down his life and he loved beyond men. He healed the sick and hung around with folks that were considered the sinners or the undesirable. If Jesus became servant, then so must we. What if each and every day, along with caring for ourselves, in our prayer, right before we got going, we said, let me be your servant today, God. You show me the way. Currently in my ministry, I work at ESL and BCTC. This semester, that's Bluegrass Community Technical College. Well, in this semester, I have had a student who appeared to be lackluster at best. I mean, she came to class one or two times, has had a few excuses for being sick, but she's not really been present. I wasn't sure what was up. On Friday, I met with my student in the library with her mother. They are from Jordan. And my student says, I want to be a doctor. When we all sat down Friday afternoon to talk about my student's work and her performance, my eyes opened up, big time. I just realized in that moment with my student and her mother there in the library that I was not really serving her. I was judging her, making judgments about her absences and perhaps not being as kind as I could be as teacher, as minister. I was not in my best teacher self. Today, I'm thankful for our conference on Friday, for Spirit's guidance, and for second chances. I think on Friday, I served my student much better, with a better attitude. Her future is in her hands to a large extent, but my ability to listen to my student, to support, to counsel, might make all the difference. Wow, wouldn't it be something if she did become a doctor one day? My friends, serving is not easy. We all make mistakes. But serving means we let go and let God be God. Serving means I let go and trust. Serving means I give people a chance as God has given me chances over and over and over again. servant to I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear I will hold my hand out 
serve him too. What if here in the United States of America, we became servants of one another, servants to the earth, servants to the world? What if? What a wonderful world that would be. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand as you are able and body or spirit as we join in our affirmation of faith. God of unsearchable mystery and light, your weakness is greater than our strength. Your foolishness brings all our cleverness to naught. Your gentleness confounds the power we would claim. You call first to be last and last to be first. Servant to be leader and ruler to be underling of all. Pour into our hearts the wisdom of your word and spirit, that we may know your purpose and live to your glory. Amen. Please be seated as we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, holy wisdom, we are seekers on the way to a deeper wisdom, wider vision. Our lives are full of information and opinions, but in the midst of it all, we long to hear the voice of wisdom, your wisdom, God, cutting through the noise and the teaching and teaching us how to live. God, we have come here this morning to learn wisdom from your, your word, from your Holy Spirit, from one another. We have come so that wisdom may call us out of the darkness into the light. We have come to have the deeper, richer, wisdom-filled life that you have promised to each of us. O oh God, make us ready to hear the word spoken to our hearts this morning. Call us to your wisdom and grant us the courage to respond. Together, we pray as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we reflect on the themes of Psalm 1, and Jesus' teaching in Mark 9, verses 30 to 37, we are reminded that true blessing comes from being rooted in God's love and becoming servants to one another. 
Just as a tree planted by streams of water bears fruit in its season, so too does our community flourish when we nourish it with our generosity and care. We invite you to join in this sacred act of giving. Your gifts help sustain the mission of God's love in our congregation and in the world. If you are able, we welcome you to bring your offerings forward as you come to the table for communion. You can also give electronically using the QR code in the worship bulletin or reach out to the church office for other ways to share your gifts. However, if you find yourself in a season of struggle and cannot give at this time, please know that you are deeply valued here. We are your community and we want to walk with you. Share with us what you need and we will strive to be the hands and feet of Christ to you. In all that we do, may we remain rooted in God's grace and committed to serving one another, creating a world where justice and love prevail. Thank you for being a part of this journey.
Beloved community, we gather at the sacred table not because we are perfect, but because we are drawn by God's love. Here we find an open invitation to participate in the feast of grace and reconciliation. This table is for all who seek to follow Christ's way of love and justice. As we prepare to come to this table, let us join in song, opening our hearts to the transformed presence of God. You will find the song, number 788, in your hymn.
join me with the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the sacred meal that we have shared, for the gift of your presence among us, and for the unity we find at this table. We are grateful for the call to live out your love in our daily lives, embracing one another with compassion and justice. Send us forth as heirs of your love, committed to the values of your kingdom and the work of reconciliation. Help us to remember the lessons of humility, bravery, and grace from our worship today. May we continue to walk in the path of Christ, becoming whole and healing to a world in need. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able for our closing prayer. to every man, woman, child, and need. 